The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is. But others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last month, our parish hosted homeless individuals and families in our hall for warm nights, and I know that Many of you gave of your time, your talent, and your resources to make it such a big success. Well, one night at Warm Nights, I witnessed something incredible. One of our guests was a homeless man who was staying here with his teenage son, and he approached one of the volunteers and asked, Is your name Mary? And she said, Yes, I'm Mary. He said, You may not remember me, but we went to junior high school together. Not only was Mary floored, but so was I. See, I had prejudged this man. I decided that I had nothing in common with him. After all, he was from a different place, different background, led a different life, right? Well, no, the reality was that he was a neighbor before his life took a turn, and now he was looking for some help, some encouragement, and some acceptance. So I have to confess that I entered the hall that night with blinders on, but in this one brief encounter, God ripped the blinders off and said, take a look at your brother, my child. Love him as I do. We can all judge by appearances, can't we? Might be because of the way a person is dressed or where they live, but could be because of their lifestyle their religion, their race, or their country of origin. Maybe a physical challenge leads to judging. When we do this, we decide that someone is beneath us because they're different from us. And until we remove these blinders from our eyes and our hearts, we will never be able to truly follow Jesus' way. So this is week four of our message series titled The Way. We've reached the midway point in our Lenten journey. And each week, the Bible readings challenge us to confront an obstacle that keeps us from growing deeper in our love of God and our love of neighbor. Today, we are told to confront our blindness. Well, in the first reading today, 
from the Old Testament, we met a man named Samuel. He was a prophet, a spokesman for God. And God told him to go visit a man named Jesse and choose one of his sons to be king. Seven sons were lined up, but none of them was the one God chose. Then we learned that one son was missing, David, the youngest, the runt of the litter, the one that everyone discounted so much they didn't even bother telling him that Samuel was coming. But when David showed up, God told Samuel, he's the one, anoint him king. How could they all have been so blind? How is it that God could see David's potential, but no one else could? Well, we were told why. Here's what the reading said. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. The Lord looks into the heart. God isn't blinded by outward appearance, when he looks at someone, anyone, he only sees his child. God sees through eyes of love. Today's gospel teaches the same lesson with Jesus' healing of a man born blind. Now you have to understand that back then, if you were sick or had any kind of physical challenge like blindness, you were labeled a sinner cursed by God. So you'd be ignored by everyone, written off, left to fend for yourself. Not Jesus. When he met the blind man, he only saw a child of God. And after he healed him, we discovered that this man had 20-20 spiritual vision because he clearly saw what the Pharisees did not. He looked at Jesus and he saw the Son of God. He had perfect spiritual vision while the Pharisees were blind as bats. Through this miracle, Jesus warns his followers that they must confront the spiritual blindness that keeps them from seeing God in others because it's the only way to make disciples and grow the kingdom. Today, ask yourself, what do I need to confront that blinds me from seeing God in others? What is it for you? Is it a judgmentalness towards those who are different? Those you don't like, don't accept, or see as beneath you? Maybe you simply don't see people around you as brothers and sisters that God wants you to reach out to and lead to discipleship in his kingdom. You know, it's not just individuals that can suffer from this and need to confront their blindness. Churches do too. Lots of churches suffer from spiritual blindness. They're oblivious to the reality staring them in the face. I know our parish struggled with this. Starting in the year 2000, parishioners began drifting away from St. Pius. It happened at all the parishes in our area and in churches all across the country. Here we've given the de-churched a name to remind us they're our neighbors. We refer to them as Bowie Bob and Bowie Barb, and there are thousands of them in our town. How did we miss this? We put blinders on. We didn't want to face the reality because it would mean changing what we're doing. But in 2013, we heard God telling us loud and clear to remove the blinders and go in a different direction. Beginning four years ago, we undertook some bold steps to move deeper in faith and go further in meeting the needs of people today, especially younger families and new members. We've seen great success from all we've started, but now we need to make some changes as we look to the future. And so, beginning today, I want to involve you in a process of reshaping our facilities, our physical plant, so that we can do as our vision statement, and today's readings tell us we must do, 
to keep forming disciples who joyfully live out the mission of Jesus Christ in Bowie. In the offertory pledge letter I sent you last spring, I wrote that our parish had contacted an architect to help us envision what is possible for us to meet our ever-growing demands for ministry and to keep us centered as that truly welcoming community that is drawing others. For six months, the architect worked with our parish finance council and our parish staff and developed a design that proposes the following enhancement to our facilities. Expansion of our entranceway, multiple new bathrooms, expanded space for slam and babysitting, space for gathering and building community near the front of the church in a new Cafe Pius, and additional rooms for ministries and meetings and storage. And all of this without taking away any parking places. <laughs> I'd like to share with you some concept designs our architect created to show what the changes could look like. Now, I know this is a little bit hard to see from where you are, but after Mass, you'll have a chance to see these up close on some poster boards. But on this first screen, you see a floor plan of the entire project. The areas in white show our existing buildings, the church, the Del Colle room, off of that you see the school. The areas in color depict new areas which surround our current church building. When our architect first unveiled this to our staff, one member said, it's kind of like we're wrapping the church in some warm spaces. I really like that description. So without altering our church, the sanctuary here, the plan enhances the worship of God that takes place in here. I know it's hard in just a couple of minutes to study these, so the floor plan and the designs that you're gonna see will be on poster boards in the entranceway and in the cafe after mass. They'll also go up on our parish website this week, and we'll also be sending this information to everyone on our parish email list. Here's what the entranceway could look like. Our sacristies would be relocated to what is currently the church meeting room beyond the parish library. There will also be bathrooms right off the main entrance, which I know will please lots of people. A new Cafe Pius would be located along the side of the church accessible through the main entrance. And it won't just be for Cafe Pius on the weekend, but for meetings throughout the week. See, right now we have our parish hall that can hold 250 people, or we have a room that can hold about 25, but nothing in between. So this new space would accommodate gatherings like Bible study speaker sessions, small group launches and trainings, sacramental prep parent meetings, sodality meetings, to name but a few things. It's designed to be a very warm, comfortable, and inviting space. Here's the design of what it would look like from the front of the church. One of our greatest successes has been our new programs for children and families, including Babysitting and SLAM, which is our children's worship. On an average weekend, more than 150 children are in SLAM. There can be 60 or more at a single mass. You see them go racing out right after the opening prayer. The numbers keep growing and it's a tight fit in our current slam room. So this new space, which would be out the back of the church, would be much larger and enable us to have two groups for slam at the same time, an older group and a younger group, which is something we'd always hoped to do from the start. We will also have a room back there dedicated to babysitting that can serve not just families with toddlers, but true babies in our own space not in the school's pre-K classroom. So please take a look at these after mass, visit our website, or check your email this week. So having designs and a vision, what's next? We, have see, we received approval from Cardinal World to take the next step. We engaged a Catholic development firm named Greater Mission to help us conduct a feasibility study over the next couple months to learn how we might be able to fund this project, estimated by the architect to cost $3 million. Over the next few months, you will learn more about our plans, 
and have an opportunity to give us your input. The reason we introduced our renewal efforts four years ago is that we knew we couldn't remain blind to the reality of what was happening in our parish and in the Catholic Church. People leaving, a whole generation largely gone from parish life, and a sense of stagnation. There's really only one option for a church, grow or decline. We're blessed to be growing. Hundreds of new families have joined our parish since we began these efforts four years ago. We added 100 new households just last year. So because we're seeing the fruit of our efforts, we need to bring our physical space in line with the growth that God is blessing us with. And I truly believe these enhancements will help do that. So the possibility here is really exciting. If we determine that we can do this together, we plan to launch a capital campaign this fall, right after Labor Day. So I look forward to hearing your thoughts about how our parish family can make this vision a reality. After Mass, members of the parish staff and I will be available to answer your questions. Let us take to heart St. Paul's words today. Together, let us rise, so that freed from blindness and filled with God's love, we may truly be light to others. Amen.